Hi! What are you guys up to? Me, I'm just looking through the Game Informer that I got in the mail a little while back, and uh, I don't really pay attention to these anymore. Um, occasionally, I'll walk into a GameStop. You've got enough points. Would you like to renew your Game, your game Informer subscription? Sure, why not? But I noticed something interesting about this Game Informer, and that is its list of the top 100 RPGs. And I thought that that would be something interesting to go through for a video. Because surely Game Informer would know what the top 100 RPGs of all time are, right? So we're going to go through this together. Let's turn the page. I feel like I'm having story time with children. Let's see. Number 100, Torment Tides of Numeria. No clue. 99, Dragon Quest 3. 98. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Okay. 97, Dark Cloud 2. Hey, I own that one. 96, Lost Odyssey. Why the fuck is Lost Odyssey at 96? Lost Odyssey is a fantastic RPG. Worthy of being in the top 25, in my opinion. Let's continue. 95, The World Ends With You. I never played that one. I will eventually someday. 94, Golden Sun. That's another amazing and impressive RPG. 93, Pillars of Eternity. I don't think I've played that one either. 92, Tactics Ogres, Let Us Clean Together. That one is a neat little tactical RPG. 91, Bastion. I believe that was the top-down game that uh, I played a demo for, but I never actually purchased. 90, Panzer Dragoon Saga. That's a pretty impressive game. 89, Tales of Symphonia. That one is pretty good. I don't have it yet, but uh, that one's a pretty damn good game. 88, Radiata Stories. Okay. 87, Vagrant Story. Again, why is Vagrant Story so low on the list? Vagrant Story is impressive as all fuck. Have you ever played it? It has a deep, introspective story about political gains, a tortured hero, a, a cursed city. It's fantastic, and it has a great combat system that reminds me of Parasite Eve. Or, Parasite Eve reminds me of Vagrant Story. Whichever. I don't know which one came first. Why is that so low? 86, Pool of Radiance. I haven't played that one. 85, Might and Magic, World of Zine. I haven't played that one either. 84, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's not an RPG. I am so sick of this shit. Just because a game vaguely has role-playing game mechanics or levels of some sort, don't call it an RPG. RPGs are role-playing games. Just because you have levels or numbers or something like that doesn't mean it's an RPG. Onimusha games let you level up your equipment. Does that mean the equipment's RPGs? That doesn't make any fucking sense, and I'm sick and tired of this bullshit. Just because Call of Duty lets you level doesn't mean Call of Duty is suddenly an RPG. Stop calling things that aren't RPGs RPGs. There's JRPGs, there's Western RPGs, but there's there's no RPG out there that's just like, oh, it's an open world and there's some, some levels and stuff. I, I, I haven't even played Horizon Zero Dawn, but I'm pretty sure it's not a fucking RPG. God, this list sucks so far. 83, Xenoblade Chronicles. That should not be at 83. That should be up higher because Xenoblade Chronicles is fucking amazing. 82, South Park, The Stick of Truth. I think that's a pretty damn good game, to be perfectly honest, but I'm actually angry because I can see what the next entry is, and I'm going to have to rant. 81. Destiny. So what you're telling me, Game Informer, what you're trying to convey to me, the reader, is that Destiny... I'm not lying, I'm not bullshitting. Destiny! Goddamn Destiny! Is better than Vagrant Story, is better than Radiata Stories, is better than Lost Odyssey. Are you fucking kidding me? Destiny is trash. Destiny is straight garbage. And you're saying it's better than Lost Odyssey that you put at fucking 96? God damn you, Game Informer. I don't know who the fuck is in charge of this list over there. That motherfucker needs to be dosed. I don't even know what that means. It's just something I heard in The Suffering one time. I think it means euthanized. That motherfucker needs to be euthanized. Destiny. 81. Fuck. 80. Odin Sphere. That's actually a pretty damn good game. 79. Dragon's Dogma. Another decent game. 78. Wasteland. 
Wasteland was pretty cool. 77, Radiant Historia. Never played it. 76, Ultima 4, Quest for the Avatar, a.k.a. the one Spoonie hates. And I'm a big fan of Spoonie. To give you a little bit of history, Spoonie's the reason I started doing YouTube. Like, it makes me sad that he's kind of fallen out of things and drama has occurred, but... If you, if you ever want to be mad at somebody who inspired Brett to start making videos and uploading them to the internet, Spoonie, Noah Antweiler, he's the reason I'm here. You can thank him. <laughs> uh, 75, Shadow Hearts Covenant. An actually amazing RPG that I hope to get a hold of one day. I need to get all of them. 74, Monster Hunter Generations. The Monster Hunter series is trash. 73, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. That is an amazing game, and the fact that it's you know in the bottom... Fourth is pathetic. Uh, 72, Paper Mario. Those games are actually really fun. 71, Jade Empire. Another impressive game. 70, Undertale. Overrated trash. 69, Disgaea. Hour of Darkness. Weeaboo garbage. 68, Divinity. Original Sin. Haven't played that one. 67, Path of the Exile. Haven't played that one. 66, XCOM Enemy Unknown. I can agree with any spot where XCOM shows up because XCOM is just good and just hard enough that people will take it different ways. I had to actually study to play XCOM. XCOM was fucking hard. I can't even get through the second one. The second one brutalizes me. Because in the first one, at the very least, I could take my time. I could very slowly proceed through battle. And sure, if I wanted to go quickly in the, uh, in the enemy unknown or enemy... Within version, the enemy within version. If I wanted to go quickly and get the meld, yeah, sure, but I could always take my time and keep my soldiers alive. In XCOM 2, you have time limits for everything, and if your guys aren't on the fucking ship, they get left behind. XCOM 2 is a great game. Fucking hate trying to play it, though. 65, Mass Effect. <sighs> Mass Effect is my favorite one. Like, uh, I was talking with one of my friends recently who was uh, planning on getting Mass Effect Andromeda, and I talked about my disdain for Mass Effect Andromeda. And it goes a lot deeper than just, ooh, glitches. Um, but he didn't know, he thought, you know, you act like everything except Mass Effect 2 sucks, and I'm like, you do realize that Mass Effect 1 is the one I like the best, right? Mass Effect 1 was amazing. The moment when I learned uh, that spoiler was a spoiler was amazing. It's been out for years. The moment I learned Sovereign was a Reaper was amazing. Uh, 64, Darkest Dungeon. That game is hard as balls. 63, Valkyria Chronicles, which I need to play the remastered of that's up there. 62, Baldur's Gate. I actually have the Baldur's Gate collection. My buddy Michael Allen sent me the PS... The, the PS... The PC Complete Collector's Edition of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and the DLC packs. But um, I don't play PC, so I haven't played it. But I do have it. One moment. Hey, he's actually wearing pants. I hope you aren't staring at my ass. Uh, I do still have it, and you probably saw it briefly in another video. But, um, yeah, the Baldur's Gate uh, series is a very good series. I just, I don't PC game. Maybe one day when I get a new computer, a uh, more powerful computer, one that I can edit and do this stuff on and everything, and maybe make some decent videos for you guys, I'll pop these in and try them out. But I do have them. A lot of people are like, oh, Brett just sells everything that people send him. That's, that's not true. I only sell like half of the things people send me. Not really. Uh, 61, The Witcher 2, Assassins of Kings. And uh, that, that, I think that's a typo. It says, it literally says Assassins. Assassins of Kings. I'm pretty sure it was just Assassin of Kings. But uh, yeah, The Witcher 2 is actually an amazing game. I just don't like The Witcher series. I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. Mm. The Witcher series, um, I have played Witcher 2 all the way through, but when it comes down to it, I just didn't like the Witcher series as much as everyone else did. I'm a weird type of person. Um, when it comes down to it, if I think a game is good, I will recommend it. So if you haven't played The Witcher 2 or The Witcher 3, I really can't help but recommend those games. Those games are good games. They're fantastic. They have great themes. They have great combat. The music is beautiful. The worlds are impressive. If you're one of these fucking sad teenage virgins who needs the TNA, they have pretty decent sex scenes for the adult content margin. The Witcher series is a great series. I just don't like it. And I hope that people can appreciate the fact that I don't like it, but I can still recommend it as being something good. Because everybody's like, oh, Brett just hates everything and says everything sucks. Well, I don't like The Witcher series, and it definitely doesn't suck. So, uh, 59, Chrono Cross. 
You know, the first time I played Chrono Cross, I was very, very enamored with it. Uh, the the change in the design, the change in the scope, the change in characterization, everything was very interesting. But I had a problem with Chrono Cross, and Chrono Cross has been out forever. It's been out for, it says here, released in 2000, been out for 17 years. So if I spoil this, I'm sorry. The thing that made me mad about Chrono Cross was that the story was so different and so intricate and so interesting. And then I got to a certain point, I believe it was the moment when I got to the Dead Sea, which is basically a place frozen in time. I, I got to the Dead Sea and I realized that it was all just boiling down to Lavos again. And that bothered me because up until that point you had the dichotomy of your heroes and the villain. You had that amazing moment throughout through the game where you basically were... Uh, body swapped with the villain and and I loved it. I just thought the gameplay was fantastic. But then the story let me down because it just boiled back down to Lavos. And I, I don't mind the story of Lavos, but that's Chrono Trigger. I wanted Chrono Cross to go somewhere bigger and bolder. I didn't want it to boil down to the same thing I'd already played before. But uh, Chrono Cross is an excellent game and if you've never played it, I can't help but recommend it. You can get it digitally on the PS3 or the PSP or the PS Vita. Uh, 58, Tales of the Unknown, Volume 1, The Bard's Tale. Never played that. That is, looks very old, though. 1985, yeah, that is old. 57, Dragon Age Inquisition. When I get another copy of that, I will play it. That's a game that fucking got lost in Georgia. Pisses me off, because it was actually really good. I had so many problems with Dragon Age 2, but um, I swear to God if Dragon Age 2 is on this goddamn list. I had so many problems with Dragon Age 2, but Dragon Age Inquisition was amazing. I, I want to play as a uh, Corian again. Not a Corian. That's, that's Mass Effect. What was I playing as? I was playing as one of the big dudes with horns. That's who I was playing as. Uh, 56, Fable 2. For all the shit that I give the Fable franchise, Fable was pretty fun. Uh, Fable 2 is by no means a bad game. A lot of it boils down to Peter Mol Molyneux's fucking bullshit. Uh, 55, Skies of Arcadia. Fantastic game. I have it on GameCube. You really need to play it if you've never played it. 54, Grandia 2. I've never played any of the Grandia games. If you can recommend a Grandia game to me, please do. 53, Star Ocean, The Second Story. I am jealous because one of my subscribers actually has that game, and he is a bastard. <laughs> 52, The Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. I don't like Oblivion either, but it's by no means a bad game. I don't like the Elder Scrolls series at all. I'm a Fallout guy. Uh, 51, Dragon Quest VIII, Journey of the Cursed King. That game is fantastic. Uh, 50, Pokemon Gold and Silver. I don't like the Pokemon games. It's all the same old shit. If you hate Call of Duty, you should hate Pokemon because it's the exact same fucking concept. Uh, 49, Xenogears. That game sucked ass. <laughs> So my problem with Xenogears, which I'm sure is the reason one subscriber completely abandoned me and started hating me like other people, it's just an opinion. If you like Xenogears, like Xenogears. For instance, that, that new guy, Devil Dog Gaming, shut up to Devil Dog Gaming. I asked him to review The Legend of Dragoon and he reviewed it and he was brutal to it. Like, I could have been so butthurt about it. I was a little butthurt. But he compared it to Final Fantasy VII, and he trashed it, and he did this. He, it, he didn't exactly trash it, but he was honest about it. He did not like it. And you know what? I'm still cool with the guy. I still watch his stuff. I haven't been able to watch some of your stuff lately because you're spoiling stuff. I'm not watching any of your Outlast 2 videos because I want to play Outlast 2. Because it looks way better than Resident Evil 7. But that's neither here nor there. Anywho, Devil Dog Gaming trashed The Legend of Dragoon. And it's his opinion. It doesn't detract from my enjoyment of The Legend of Dragoon. It doesn't make The Legend of Dragoon any any less of a good game in any pantheon. He just didn't like it. And I didn't like Xenogears, and I think one of my subs took that way harsher than he should have. But my problem with Xenogears was the fact that I didn't like the combat system at all. There was just something about the combat system that put me right off. I thought that the mechs were cool, but it gave you a bit of the taste of the mechs and then took it away, which I'm sure if I played more of the game, and I can play more of the game, I can just download it on Vita right now, uh, I'm sure I would get more of that mech action. But really the thing that put me off about Xenogears was, number one, the the story. I actually, after I, after I got done not wanting to play Xenogears, I looked up other people's videos talking about the story of Xenogears and going through it. Te technically, I spoiled the whole game for myself. I didn't want to play it, but I at least experienced the story. And the story is garbage. Confusing, convoluted, weeaboo, garbage. But uh, I just didn't like the gameplay, and I sure as shit didn't like the story. I mean, that's what I did after Nier Automata. After, after not liking Nier Automata, I looked up videos and spoiled the entire story for myself. And I don't like Nier Automata's story either. If I don't like the gameplay and I don't like the story, there's no reason for me to play the game. 
I'm not sitting here going, Xenogear sucks in every video. It's just, it's one game I did not like, and a subscriber took that shit hard. So hard. Get over it. I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that have played The Legend of Dragoon and think it's shit. Go ahead, let me know. Let me know. Uh, 48, Persona 3. That series sucks as well. 47, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Zelda's not an RPG either. The only one that was an RPG was fucking Zelda 2. And I don't care. Oh, but Zelda has levels. You don't know because you haven't played it yet. I don't care. Zelda is not an RPG. It's an action-adventure fucking fantasy game. 46, Demon Souls. I love Demon Souls. 45, Mass Effect 3. Okay. Game Informer. You do know what a role-playing game is, right? You understand the uh, concept of RPG, because if I come back here to 65, and then I come over here to 45, uh, that's 20 levels of difference between what is an actual RPG in Mass Effect 1 and what is a third-person shooter wank fest in Mass Effect 3. Role, playing, game. It all harkens back to things like Dungeons and Dragons, where you would create your character. You would work towards their attributes. You don't have to roll for attributes anymore. You can just allocate points. Games will give you points and you allocate them. Role-playing game. You progress through a story. You play a role. You level. And you allocate attribute points. Mass Effect 2 and 3 had progressively better shooting, and progressively worse RPG mechanics. The fact that you imply that Mass Effect 3 is somehow better than Mass Effect 1, even if I'm not bringing into the shit story elements of Mass Effect 3 that ruin the franchise for me, the simple fact of the matter is the gameplay is nowhere near as robust as Mass Effect 1. If they remastered Mass Effect 1, and it, the only thing they changed, the only thing they changed, they don't even have to fuck with the graphics, maybe tweak the frame rate a little bit. If the only thing they changed was the fact that Mass Effect 1 now played like Mass Effect 3 and had tighter shooting, Mass Effect 1 would wipe the floor with Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3, and Mass Effect Andromeda. Because Mass Effect 1 was a role-playing game. It was a game where you played a role. Your role was Commander Shepard. And you, you traveled through the galaxy, you leveled, you discussed, you gained allies, you gained enemies, and you progressed through this story that they laid out for you. There's a reason I like the Mass Effect franchise. It's because it reminds me of Star Trek. I'm a fucking nerd. I used to watch Star Trek when I was little, and Mass Effect to me is Star Trek... Uh, just like a new, better version of it. Because there's diplomacy. Sure, there's a lot of combat, but there's a lot of diplomacy. And the fact that you would imply that Mass Effect 3 is somehow better than Mass Effect 1 is asinine. It's, it's completely asinine. Mass Effect 1 was the best ex one of the best experiences that I had on my Xbox 360. And the fact that you imply that 3 is somehow better than it in any other way is just... Ridiculous. The only thing that Mass Effect 3 has that's better than Mass Effect 1 is the aspect of the combat. And maybe the Renegade Paragon options. But at the end of the day, Mass Effect 1 is more of an RPG than Mass Effect 3. Fact. I hate that I have to waste time discussing this, but that's a fucking fact. You sicken me, Game Informer. You sicken me. Let's continue. <clears throat> 44, Fire Emblem Awakening. I don't like Fire Emblem franchise either. 43, Wizardry, Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. That's an insane name. This is an old game. Released 1981. It was on the NES, Game Boy, PC, Mac, Apple II, Commodore 64. Shit. 42, Shadowrun. Never played those. I played the crappy 360 one and it was trash. Uh, 41, Xenosaga, Episode 1, Der Will zur Macht. I love the Xenosaga series. I do not think Xenosaga is better than Lost Odyssey, though, so again, fuck you, Game Informer. 40, Neverwinter Nights. I, I don't know. 39, Fallout, as in the top-down isometric one. Fallout is amazing. Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 are fantastic. 38, System Shock 2. I would love to play System Shock 2 someday, but I probably won't get to. 37, Diablo 3. No clue. 36, Fallout New Vegas. 
But Fallout New Vegas is not a bad game, but I like Fallout 3 more. I often said to myself that they released Fallout 3 with uh, weapon mods and iron sights. I would have been happy with that. And I need to actually talk about Fallout 4 eventually because I was, uh, you know, I did a video on it playing the game. But I want to do another video and I want to like go in depth and talk about the things that I didn't like because there's actually a lot of things about Fallout 4 I didn't like now that the hype has died down. Which is why you should never trust uh, you know the reviews right when the game comes out. You have to give it time for people to play it and give it time for people to stew on it. Fallout 4 is a great game, it's just there's a lot of problems with it. 35, Final Fantasy 10. I think Final Fantasy 10 is a fine game. I have no problem with it being at 35. 34, Fantasy Star 4, The End of the Millennium. That game is awesome, and I think that game is in my Sonic uh, Genesis Mega Collection thingy. Uh, 33, Final Fantasy. Now, I don't know how many of you love Final Fantasy, but I do. If, uh, if you watch Pro Jared, or if you've never watched Pro Jared, he actually played through Final Fantasy recently. So if you haven't seen that, I recommend you go check that out, because that was awesome. 32, Valkyrie Profile. Never played that. Ooh, 31, Ultima 7, The Black Gate, a.k.a. Spoonie's favorite. I like Spoonie, shut up. 30, Persona 4. Again, I don't want those games. I think they're trash. Uh, 29, Suicoden 2, which is, in many people's opinion, the best Suicoden game. I've never gotten to play it. I played 3 and 4, and I wasn't a fan of them, but I'm sure there's some magic about Suicoden 2 that I'm not getting to experience. Uh, 28, Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars. I want to play this game someday. If you have a means to help me play this game someday, please help me out with that. Uh, 27, Earthbound. That game is garbage. I bought that for the Wii U. That game is garbage. I want my $9.99 back. 26, Dragon Age Origins, a.k.a. the best one. Dragon Age Origins is an example of a role-playing game through and through. I know there are people that can't get into it because they're like, oh, the combat system. I like I liked the aspect of Dragon Age 2 where I could just hammer the button because, you know, Peter Molyneux, all they do is smash buttons. Um, but Dragon Age Origins had a lot of strategy to it. It had a system that reminded me of the Gambit system from Final Fantasy XII. It had to tactical, strategic combat. It had positioning. It had all kinds of things. One of the things that I learned really quick about Dragon Age was uh, take out the archers first because if you don't, they're just going to be needle need needling you, nickel and diming your health down, and it's not fun. But uh, Dragon Age Origins, you played a great warden you were working to stop the blight as well as having to deal with the issue of corrupt men uh, one of the most just amazing moments and disheartening moments for me in uh, my Xbox 360 days was the Battle of Ostagar and I sound like such a nerd when I say that shit. And that moment when King Kalen and Duncan were fighting and you lit the fire to to signal the backup forces to come in and help you. And uh, uh, what was it, Terran Loghain? What was, it? what was the other guy, Terran something? Anywho, Loghain basically left you all to die. And I lost out on uh, my mentor, Duncan, who was fucking badass. And King Kalen, who was really sweet. Uh, he, was, he was a nice person. I thought, you know, after Hal killed my entire fucking family because I was a noble human, um, I, was, I was looking forward to beating some, some dark spawn ass and then going and tearing towels and towel... Towel. Hal, a new asshole. But um, that didn't happen that way. And it was, uh, it was very disheartening. And the moment when I could go through the DLC, return to Ostagar, I, uh, I got Duncan's daggers and King Kalen's armor. I always would put King Kalen's armor on Alistar because they were actually brothers. He didn't find that out until later. And uh, I would always hold on to Duncan's daggers. I wouldn't even sell them. But Dragon Age Origins is a fantastic RPG. If you can get past the elements of the combat that may put you off, I think that you will have a grand story to get into. And uh, one thing I like about Dragon Age Origins is um, it seems like since Mass Effect, everybody has been trying to do that dialogue wheel. Everybody has been trying to do that dialogue wheel. I think, if I'm correct, it's in fucking Final Fantasy 15. I do not like the dialogue wheel. I like things that are in, like, Fallout um, 3, Fallout New Vegas, and Dragon Age Origins, where you have an entire box full of different options that you can do. It's not just a circular dialogue wheel. I like that version of uh, communication much better. Uh, 25, Kingdom Hearts 2. Amazing game. Sephiroth will wreck your butthole. Uh, 24, Dark Souls. Dark Souls is good shit. Uh, 23, Final Fantasy 4. Final Fantasy 4 is amazing. I won't go into much of a depth talking about it, but 
Final Fantasy IV is amazing. And I want to say thank you again, shout out to my boy Valhawk, aka Kevin, for sending me Final Fantasy IV Complete on PSP. I, um, I look forward to playing through that. I had gotten to the part where, uh, Cecil, uh, became a white warrior, but I... I had to clear space on it because I was trying to switch out memory cards and the memory card I bought was bad so I had to go back and so I've got to reinstall it and restart it. Um, I really should have put the save date on the PS3. But Final Fantasy IV is amazing. Uh, number 22, EverQuest. Never played it. 21, The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, aka the best one in the Elder Scrolls franchise other than um, Daggerfall. Uh, 20, Diablo. Nah. 19, Persona 5. That shit just came out and you throw it on a goddamn list. You guys are fucking scrubs. 18, Final Fantasy 7. Let's actually talk about Final Fantasy 7. Remember earlier when I was talking about Xenogears and I said that it's just an opinion? If you're a fan of Final Fantasy 7, what I'm about to say may hurt your feelings. Do me a huge favor. Put on your big boy britches and fucking deal with it. It's just my opinion. If you like Final Fantasy 7, if you love Final Fantasy 7, if you wish you could fillet Final Fantasy 7, what I'm about to say will not destroy you. Calm down. I don't like Final Fantasy 7. My issue with Final Fantasy 7 is twofold. Final Fantasy 7 is not a bad game. I'm just as stoked for the remake as anybody else because I don't think it's a bad game. My problem with Final Fantasy 7 is it's the quote unquote most beloved Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 7 came out at a time when two things occurred. Number one, you had a whole generation of individuals uh, discovering games, discovering anime, discovering their weird weeaboo trash. You also had a whole generation of people who were like, ooh, 3D graphics. Even back in the day, people were impressed with pretty graphics. Final Fantasy 7 was the first 3D Final Fantasy. So it enamored people with its visuals. I was not impressed. I thought that the other versions of Final Fantasy, you know, 4, 5, 6, I thought that those versions looked perfectly fine. I don't care too terribly much for the transition from 2D to 3D with certain franchises, and Final Fantasy would certainly be one. If they released a new Final Fantasy today that had the old style of graphics, obviously prettier, but the old style of graphics, I would buy that in an instant because it would be very nostalgic to me. But my big issue with Final Fantasy VII wasn't just the people going, ooh, pretty graphics. <clears throat> it's the fact that people take the story of Final Fantasy VII as if it's something amazing. When you can really break down Final Fantasy VII as being uh, almost a uh, point-by-point -point copy of Final Fantasy VI. You have the organiz organization Avalanche versus the Returners. You have Kefka versus Sephiroth. You have... A lot of different uh, organizations and situations that are very much like Final Fantasy VI, like even you know the meteor and the destruction of the world in VI. I have a problem with that, but the big thing that kills me about Final Fantasy VII, and the part that I know is going to make people butt hurt, is the fact that Final Fantasy VII boils down to, and this is me being as much of an asshole as possible. I'll go ahead and prevent you from, you know, accusing me of that. Final Fantasy VII boils down to the journey of one crossdresser beating up a mama's boy because he killed his worthless cunt slag of a girlfriend. Sephiroth is a terrible villain. Sephiroth is a mama's boy. Sephiroth was one of the most powerful members of Soldier. Soldier First Class, Soldier S Class. Sephiroth was up there at the top. And when it comes down to it, his entire mental faculties broke apart because he learned of Genova. He learned that he was an experiment. No shit, Sephiroth. You're super powerful. What do you think happened? You were born that way? And he learned that Genova was this alien entity that came from the sky, and he was infused with her cells, and so he thought of her as his mother, even though Lucrezia is his mother. Yes, I played Final Fantasy VII. I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Shut up, fanboys. Um, and Hojo is his father. Spoiler. Anywho, I didn't like Sephiroth because... I like the tormented hero, uh, the tormented heroes and the tormented villains. I like very deep and intricate characters, but I always felt that Sephiroth was just a bitch. Sephiroth is a bitch. In other iterations of him, he has been a lot better. Like seeing him in Advent Children and hearing his voice, he sounds menacing. Seeing him in the Kingdom Hearts franchise, he's menacing. And I haven't played Crisis Core yet. Again, thanks, Kevin. You beautiful bastard. But I hope that it fleshes him out some more. But I don't know how it's going to because I haven't played it yet. But when I played Final Fantasy VII the first time, there was no voice acting. The first Final Fantasy with voice acting was X. Another reason why everyone loves X. X's good, though. X's okay. Ha ha ha. The thing is, when I first played Final Fantasy VII, it was up to my own interpretation. I know there's idiots out there that always thought that it was pronounced Shinra instead of Shinra. I argue with fucking nerds daily about the pronunciation of stuff in Final Fantasy games when there wasn't a pronunciation. Like, how do you say... 
Titus. Is it Titus or Titus? Titus or Titus? Because they never said his name in 10, and that's the one thing we always argued about. It's Titus. It's Titus. It's Titus. It's Titus. Fucking annoying. I say Titus. I didn't have voice acting back then, and so I interpreted my own voices for the characters. Barrett was a very stereotypical character sounding, you know, whatever. Uh, Sid was gruff. He sounded like, you know, everybody's a cool uncle that they liked. You know, goddamn T! Um, Sephiroth, to me, every time I heard him talk about Mother, all I heard was a whiny little bitch. That's it. I'm going to go see Mother, and I'm going to destroy the world and use it as my vessel to travel through the cosmos. That's what I fucking thought of. And that's why I have a big problem with Final Fantasy VII is because I don't like, I don't like the characters. I don't like the villain. The, my favorite character in Final Fantasy VII is Red Thirteen, because Red Thirteen, out of everyone, had the deepest fucking background. I loved Red Thirteen. I want a game with Red Thirteen. Come on, Square Enix, give me a Red Thirteen game. I want to play as Nanaki, which is really funny when you name him Nanaki going back through, and he's like, "My secret name is Nanaki." Yeah, we've been calling you that the whole time. <laughs> Let's uh, proceed. We're almost done with this list. Uh, 17, Ultima Online was trash. Uh, 16, Secret of Mana. I want to play that one day as well. 15, Pokemon Red and Blue. 14, Deus Ex. Amazing game. Uh, 13, Planets, Planescape Torment. 12, Fallout 3. 11, Bloodborne. Bloodborne is trash too. 10, Final Fantasy Tactics, a.k.a. Pro Jared's favorite. 9, Baldur's Gate 2, Shadows of Om. I have that one. I will play it someday. 8, Diablo 2. 7, Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic. That game's actually really good. Thank you again, Daniel, for that copy of that game. Uh, 6, World of Warcraft, Forever Virgins. 5, The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt. Why is that in the top 5? Out of all the games I could think of to be in the top 5, we go with that one. Four, Mass Effect 2. Again, why is that in the top five? Three, Chrono Trigger. Let's be honest, Chrono Trigger probably should have been number one. But Chrono Trigger is amazing, so I can't really I can't really argue with it being at that at that spot. Two, Final Fantasy 7. I mean not Final Fantasy 7, my bad. I saw the V in the uh, Final Fantasy 6. Number two is Final Fantasy 6, my bad. Number two is Final Fantasy 6. So what's number one? You have Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI, arguably two of the best RPGs ever made, with the best stories, the best characters, the best scenarios. What could possibly be better than Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI? Could it be? Maybe? My favorite game? Probably not. It's fucking Skyrim. God damn it, Game Informer. You guys fucking suck. How the fuck is Skyrim better than Chrono Trigger? How the fuck is Skyrim better than Final Fantasy VI? I'm not even going to rant on that. That's just depressing as fuck. Fuck that list.